It may be tough to find a sense of community these days. Am I off mute? Can everybody hear me? But at AARP Arizona, we're bringing the community to you. Hi, everybody. Glad you could join. Oh, it's so good to see you all. What what are we going to learn today? Let's get started. Whether it's reading a good book. I am so glad we got to read historical fiction today. It is my favorite. Learning something new. Three, Adding a spring to four. your step. Do it again. One, two, three, four. Or telling someone you care about them. Connecting with others is just one click away. Visit aarp.org forward slash near you today and find a new community tomorrow. Well, hello, good evening, everyone. Oh my gosh, we have such a fun night for you. Just you wait and see all the magic that's going to happen tonight on your screen. Uh, So exciting. Now, I know we have folks out there on Facebook, YouTube, and I know at least Nick is probably watching on Twitch. Along with a handful of other people, you know, what's funny because Twitch has been, that number has been climbing every, every week. It's adding a person here, a person there. It's nice because it's always the same address long term as opposed to both Facebook and YouTube keeps changing. So I can put that out there on like meetup far in advance. So I want to welcome you all to January 14th of 2021. And so thank you so much for taking part of your evening to spend some time with us and to learn about some history, to engage, to chat, to have some fun. What can you expect this evening? Well, you know, we kind of have a standard format here. So we always do our trivia. We'll have a little bit of show and tell because, you know, I've got a house full of stuff. And I figure I should at least try and do something. Oh, Nick's on Facebook this time. Okay. So we also do some Arizona music history, and that's going to be super cool. So, you know, I think also kind of a a little running theme is I was how many days old when I learned this? There are two things that I learned today that I find kind of shocking that I should know better. We're going to go down a cocktail route because of course it is a happy hour and of course we have another amazing guest just wait till you meet her uh again we are gonna have a blast so if this is your first time here you might wonder who is that man on my screen and why is he there how did he get there? Well, you know, about t- actually 21 years ago, actually 21 years ago and two weeks, I was working in a library in Brooklyn and decided it was actually this lovely little Carnegie building there and decided it was time for a change because of the snow, the slush, that bone chilling bite. I had had enough. So I traded it all for a library in South Phoenix, which was the Harmon Library, which was built in 1950, which was the first branch library for the city of Phoenix. Now it's a big fancy library, which is really cool. But, you know, to get here, we loaded everything we own into a big orange cube, a U-Haul, and made that trek westward ho we went, and we landed here and promptly moved into a little 1956 ranch house. Now, when we first got here, it was multiple shades of beige. I am happy to say it has now been reduced to two colors, seafoam and cantaloupe. 
And that's what my kitchen looks like today. Let's let's actually go in for a, lar a better look of that because I love my kitchen. All that buttercream yellow tile, that yellow in the wall oven with no window, and the push buttons inset in the wall that work that matching stove top. Uh, and I, I make my coffee with it every single morning. And I'm so happy to do that. So as soon as we got here, all I kept hearing about, there was no history here. But I knew that wasn't true because every time I went on an adventure, whether it was on foot, on bike, on wheels, I kept coming across so many amazing people, places, and stories that really got me thinking, you know, there's more to this place than what I than what I'm just picking up. So I just start talking to people and retelling their stories about Arizona. And then there's that post-war boom that I think in a lot of ways made the Arizona that we all know and love, all those GIs that either were stationed here, trained here, or passed on their way to somewhere else. And after the war, they were moving here in huge numbers, and in some cases looking for a house just like mine. Now I'm also called the Hip Historian. You might wonder, how does one get a name like the Hip Historian? Well, you know, every year we have a celebration for Arizona becoming a state. And that just happens to fall on Valentine's Day. We were first, and then Valentine's Day happened, but back in 2012, we had a big celebration for ourselves, 100 years of statehood. And so they did events across the state and in front of the state capitol, they had an amazing stage with all kinds of vendors and everything. And they gave me 15 minutes to talk about anything I wanted to. And I chose to talk about one of my most favorite events that hardly anybody remembers. It was called Mask of the Yellow Moon. It ran from 1926 to 1955. At its height, it had over 5,000 high school and college students performing, as well as making sure the show ran. Now, this event was touted right up there nationally with Mardi Gras as something that everyone in the country should come and see. And a lot of people did. In fact, I was able to find three dresses from the late 30s in a box and was able to convince these friends to put them on. They wandered the stage as we talked about the history of Mask of the Yellow Moon. And, you know, and that's what I was doing pre-COVID. I was doing a lot of lectures. I was doing bus tours. And, you know, in COVID, all of that stopped and wasn't quite sure what to do. And so I realized, you know, what happens is when I share with people, they share their stories with me. None of that was happening. So that's why I decided to launch Arizona History Happy Hour. And we've been having so much fun for this whole new year. We've got some amazing stuff coming up. Um, we do have, we did start a walking tour of downtown Phoenix. We just did one last weekend. Now everybody's wearing a mask. It's all outdoors. Actually, Deb and I wear microphones so that we have little speakers on our hips so that way everybody can hear us and be socially distanced. Now the one we're having next month in February actually has been sold out, but the second Saturday of March is still open. There are seats or spots left on that. So if you're so inclined to walk around and talk about some fun Arizona stuff, we'll talk about how you can get on that. Now, also, you can always reach out to me via Facebook, Instagram, which is Hip Historian, or email, which is hello at Hip Historian, or even go to my webpage, which is hiphistorian.com. And I know I already see a bunch of you have been, ch have been chatting over here. So that's great to see some of you. Now I will ask if you're watching on Facebook, there is a little button in the bottom that says share. If you can click on that, I would really appreciate it because then you can share the Arizona love with all your friends. And even, I mean, I had friends even earlier today at about 4.30 saying, hey, what's the topic for tonight? And in case you can't tell by my green screen what the, what the theme is. So they're like, oh my gosh. And so I know they started sharing that around as well. So share the love. So now we're going to do a little bit of show and tell. And so 
you know, if you walk into a antique store, antique store, you might find some glasses that belong to a particular gas station. They might be Blakely glasses. And, you know, I was lucky enough a few years ago. This is, oh, let's see. So this is actually what would have gone on a gas pump for Blakely. So when you're filling your car up, this is what you would have looked at before you got your coupons that then you could exchange for dishes, glasses, a tray that had become quite collectible. Now, Blakely was all over not just the valley, but also down in Tucson. One of the things I love is, is that they actually had a Blakely rocket that was a ride you could go on. There are very few photos that are out there. So I always love to kind of challenge folks to say like, hey, if you know someone who has a picture of them riding in a Blakely rocket, oh my gosh, I would so love to see that. Because there's only, as far as I know, there's only, I think, at the um, ASU or the State Archives over in Papago Park at the Heritage Center. I think they may have like one photo and that's it. Now, when we did the happy hour for State Fair, there was a question about Bobby Ball, who was a race car driver and the Bobby Ball Memorial race at the fairgrounds. And when I was looking into Blakely, I didn't realize they actually owned or sponsored Bobby Ball and the Blakely special. All right, so now we have our happy hour, and because our theme is of the evening is Metro Center, oh my gosh, PJ went crazy. He was so excited about this theme that he decided to create a cocktail where each historical figure represented is an ingredient or flavor in the cocktail. So you have, I mean, you've got gin for. Herman the Kid, you've got, I mean, there's, so, I mean, Brandy for the de the short dead dude, a little bit of a pepper sprinkle. So, you know, PJ, what was great, said he loves it. He loves the challenge of trying. It's like he gets the theme and then he's got to figure out, okay, how do I do this in a cocktail? And so this week he was challenging me because he went so far and put together a great story on Instagram. So if you go to the Facebook event under the comments, or in the discussion, there is a link to his Instagram story that is much better than what I've done here because he really went to task. Now, when he was making this, Strange things are afoot at the Circle K. so he actually went to the Circle K where this was filmed over on Southern and Hardy and got some props for tonight. He even did a reduce of stout that I obviously boiled over the pot. So, Okay, so he loves to challenge me with a kit. So that's exactly what he's done. So let's do this. And so, okay, so now the beauty of PJ when he does this is all those different liquors. So the Commerce Gin, the Symphony Gin, Campari, Lillet Blanc, Dolan Rouge, a little bit of brandy. It's already all in here. So all I have to do is that. Oh my gosh. So, and you'll see why we have to use the circle tape trays in just a moment as I try not to. All right, and so then this is a stout foam with bitters from Illinois. Oh my gosh, he measured this out perfect. And so then for Bob Genghis Khan, he even did a little Chezwan pepper ground. So, all right, so this is why we're doing this. So, hey, that doesn't look too bad for not knowing what I was doing. So, all right. All right, so cheers, everybody. This is the Wild Stallion. 
Oh, dang. Oh, snap. That's good. You can really taste the stout reduction in that. Oh, my gosh. All right. All right. Got to get back on track. Put the drink down. Put the drink down. It's okay. So yeah, so it's got it's got all kinds of things in it. So I know there may be a couple of these available still at the Valley Ho that he with the reduction that he still has. So go hit him up and see if there's one of these wild stallions still hanging out just for you. And I am so excited because we're bringing on my friend Kenyatta. Oh, oh hey. hey. <laughs> I'm on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait a minute. And we don't want that. Uh, it's like we don't want my silent bartender on. So. <laughs> What's up, Marshall? Hello, I was making my drink you? over here. I was making my little old fashioned over here with my old oh, my drink, my drink nice. kit. <laughs> nice. And what are you drinking this evening? This is an old fashioned. I'm putting it together. I'm drinking it in a, in a wine glass because that's what I have. So I have uh, a friend who has a kit where they send you everything you need except for the alcohol. So I've got the the uh, Ang Angostura ar aromatic bitters. I've got my uh, cane syrup. It came with this fancy spoon, you know, and- Oh, look at you being all- Yeah, all and then the little people. cherries in this little packet. Oh, oh you my know? God. Yeah, so- you know, um, hiking Because when you need a little drink and you're on the hike, you can just kind of pop that open and pop some cherries in your mouth. <laughs> you're good. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So oh my yeah. gosh, that's a great idea. I've never seen them in the little gel pack. <gasps> and they said that, um, actually, interesting story. Uh, she said that they got these from an airline that when had bought them to use them on the airline. And when COVID uh, hit, uh, her company got the inside scoop that they needed to sell all these little things because they couldn't uh, they couldn't use them. So they use them in their old fashioned kits. That's so, brilliant. Mm hmm. Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. <laughs> yeah. So, Kenyatta, tell us a little bit about yourself. I see this initial MM after your name. What is that? <laughs> MMs. I like MMs. <laughs> Just a lot. No, 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 no. Uh, masters in management. So I don't have an MBA. It's a, it's a masters in management, specifically MM. <laughs> so yeah. that's what it is. Yeah. I, so I didn't want all the in the, the financy stuff, you know, so it was straight, straight like change management, leadership, organizational leadership, stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. So I figured, hey, yeah. I earned it. I'm putting it after my name. <laughs> no, exa exactly. <laughs> I don't blame you. <laughs> yes. So I know we, we first met through Junior League through the ambassadors. Well, and you know what's interesting? We and we talked about this earlier. We may have met before that. Yeah, <laughs> if you yeah, realize that's it. Gonna come up later on because who knows? Who knows? I mean, but, right. but we think we met initially uh, through the junior league. Yeah, we're both community ambassadors, and you know we'd sit there at the table in the meetings, and always I'd be like, "Wait a minute, why don't I know? Why do I know this guy?" <laughs> like, exactly. why? right? What? And so that's actually what happened. It's like, hey, you know, let's just. It's like, hey, you know, let's do a little bit of chat session and let's just see what happens. And yeah. And here, and here we are. So yeah, we had that conversation. I'm like, tell me, like, what do you actually do? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <really>. <laughs> and you keep asking each other that same question. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do, man? You know? And then once you told, once we told me about, I was like, wait a minute. Okay. I knew it had something to do with Arizona, and, but I didn't really know. So once we had that conversation, I'm like, dude, that's really cool what you know what it is and then yeah and you asked me to be on the show and i'm like yeah let's do it and uh talking about metro center just seemed like you know it just seemed to make sense <laughs> right i mean because i mean i think that i think the auction is still going on i don't know if that's ended yet because i know you could actually you could actually own a piece of metro center I did not know that. I need to they get were selling off some of like the signage and things from a variety of some oh. of the shops. So when everybody left, all the stuff that was left over, they're just like, hey. Very cool. Very cool. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So that's it. So I'm excited to be here. I, I have. Um, OK, so I did. OK, because I think I'm a I think I'm a techie. And so I I think I have watch parties happening in a couple of places that I shared it to. Oh, inside cool. one of my groups, I think, and then on my page. So if I, I see, if you see me looking over here at my phone, it's because I'm like just making sure everything is doing its stuff. But I'm trying to spread the good word about what you're doing because I think it's just so cool. So thanks for having me. Oh, my pleasure. And you know, and speaking of that, I'm, I'm so 
Let's see. So John said that he bought the large coffee table from the food court at Metro Center. What? <laughs> so when are y'all going to come over and have some coffee? Yeah. That's what I want to know. <laughs> so so you can all begin with sitting on the food court. Yes. Yes. Good old food. I'm, I'm, you know, I just, I'm, I like Metro. I miss it. <laughs> You know, now granted, I stopped shopping there a long time ago because there was a, no reason to go there. However, I still, you know, have love for Metro. And the only reason I would go was Hot Topics because, you know, sometimes you just needed things that only Hot Topics would have. A absolutely. Oh, so. and so can I tell you that I did I can I work there? Oh, I didn't know you actually work there. Did I tell you that? I, no. opened, I opened Hot Topic. Oh so I, I'm not going to say what know. year that was. <laughs> You've been holding out on me, Kenyatta. Oh my gosh. I opened that store. There was no, you know, I got hired there before it actually opened and unpacked all the boxes and set the store up and everything like wow. that. So, wow. yep. All right. So we're going to have a lot of fun tonight. So we always do trivia. Mm -hmm. And so our trivia is a little more unique than I think when you, if you go to a lot of other trivia nights that are more about, you know, what you think, you know, or don't learn or anything, but we actually play trivia so that it's more of a learning thing. So what we'll do is we'll go through the questions. Now they're multiple choice so that we, even if you don't know the answer, you just guess and you might be right. You might not be right, but that's half the fun. But then we're going to have a little bit of a music break and just wait till you find out about the music break. Oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's one of those like, oh my gosh. Hello. Big bulb goes on. I can't wait. Yeah. And then, and then we'll actually go and talk about the answers. And so we're going to talk about some mall culture, all kinds of things going on. Yeah. So yeah, so they're all multiple choice. So that way, even if you don't know the answer, Okay. You know, throw a dart. Now people keep track. I actually had somebody who sent me, they had their leg and a Sharpie and that's how they were keeping track of their answers for trivia. You can do it in the chat. You can do it. You know, if you want to write it in Hershey syrup on a banana, you go <laughs> right ahead. And then you know what, when you're done, you can eat the evidence. You can oh, eat. You're like, I was never there. You know? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, and Kenyatta, I see you're already getting some love. I'm getting some love? You are. It's like my friend Preston said, Nunzilla. Oh my God. <laughs> Ah. Yes, Nunzilla. <laughs> yes, we'll talk about that in just a moment, in just a few minutes. So that's funny. Someone tossed out Nunzilla. That's funny. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Preston. Yes, <laughs> uh, Preston's great. So, all right. So, our first question is: What year did Metro Center open for business? Was it A, nineteen seventy-two? Was it B? 1969, the summer of love. Was it C, 1970 or D, 1973? All right. So one of those is the year that Metro Center opened its doors. All right. And how many anchor or department stores did Metro Center have? And Hot Topics was not one of them. So you can't <laughs> include that in the list. So was it A, four, B, five, C, three, or D, six? How many anchor stores did Metro Center have? Now, you know, this could have been a trick question and that may come up in the discussion, but we shall see. All right. The mall scene from Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure were filmed at Metro Center. What year did that movie debut? <laughs> Bill and Ted. <laughs> so I know it's like, I mean, who knew PJ was going to, and you know, I think just because we mentioned that name, I need to have another sip of your wild. I, I have to say, by the way, I make a pretty good old fashioned. I just found out when the kids all <laughs> set up for me <laughs> and I don't make drinks. I like, I'm a beer drinker, but I love an old fashioned. And usually they're made for me, but I just made my own and I'm, Pretty proud of well, I, I I love cocktail kits. I mean, there are so many places around town. There's things I like about like the Valley Ho, some of the other bars around town. You can just get a cocktail to go. Take it home. It's already pre-made. You just dump it in a glass and you're good to go. 
I did not know that was a thing. Yeah. And so always so learning. Like, always learning. Yeah. So that's why <laughs> PJ likes to challenge me and figure out, okay, what can I get him to do that he doesn't, he's going <laughs> to try and mess up on. Yeah. But dang, that's a good tasty cocktail. Man, I, I'm interested in that. The wild stallion. Yeah. All right. So question four, Castles and Coasters did not originally start with that name. What was the name of Castles and Coasters? A, Golfland. B, Metro Golf. C, Golf and Stuff. Or D, Roller Coaster Rumpus. <laughs> wow, I want to go to D. I don't know where Roller Coaster Rumpus is, but that sounds like a lot of fun. Awesome. <laughs> and I'm looking at the comments. I can see the people coming. I see, hey, ba Babs, what's up, girl? <laughs> you know Bab? Yeah, I know Bab. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I'm oh. just scrolling through the names. I'm seeing like who, who I know is checking it out. I know Babs. Girl. Oh my gosh. And then my friend Lisa's on here. It's like we actually went to Castles and Coasters and played mini golf. Uh, <laughs> so, ah, uh, very good. Okay. So, question five Which one of these was not one of the original anchor stores? A. Goldwaters, B. Nordstrom's, C. Dillard's, or D. The Broadway? So, one of those was not one of the original anchors. I'm checking out on here. Uh, Preston was a hot topic alumni, he says. <laughs> <laughs> what does he mean, alumni? Huh. I, I don't know what that means. I, you, I know. I thought it was still graduated occurring. from there. Like, when did you graduate? Preston, what did you graduate in from hot topic? I'm curious. <laughs> I bet it was eyeliner. <laughs> graduated eyeliner. Yeah, All right. So, question about. six What year did Vans announce? there would be a van skate park in the mall. Mm. Oh, and Bab says that Tom says hi. Mm. Oh, he worked there. Preston worked there too. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, All right. Good to know. Oh, Manic Panic was his major. That's <laughs> Manic Panic. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun to see all the comments. Hey, everybody. <laughs> all right. So Vans announced there'd be a skate park in the mall. Yep. Um, 2001A, B, 2003, C, 1999. That's a good year for space, I hear. <laughs> or D, 2004. All right. So one of those... Is the year that Vans announced there'd be a skate park inside the mall? So did you did you know that I used to um, host skateboard uh, skateboard contests? I've won skateboard contests, uh, not first place. I got like fourth place, but yeah, I'm a skateboard. I was skating at that park. <laughs> wow! So I've never been on a skateboard. Mm. Are you? Are I, you I, I, I I don't trust my, especially now. I'm I was like, gonna oh say, I was gonna say, are you gonna keep it that way? <laughs> I'm gonna keep it that way. I made on rollerblades, and that was harrowing enough. I almost killed a friend back in Brooklyn on rollerblades. Oh my but, gosh! So yeah, no, I'm right. so, And then, oh my god, we're gonna get a chance to talk about the ice skating rink that was at Metro Center. Okay, so what was the name of the ice skating rink that was located under the food court? A Metro Center on Ice. B, Metro Ice Palace, C, Metro Rink, or D, Metro Ice Castle. All right. So one of those. There. People on Facebook are chatting there. They are yeah. indeed. Yeah. And some of them know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now we're talking a little bit more mall culture. What was the first mall in Phoenix? A, Maryvale, B, Christown, C, Park Central, or D, Metro Center? What was the first mall in Phoenix? So N Nick says here, he says, my dad took me to the arcade when I was a kid before they put in the turnstile so he could plausibly tell me a giant used to live in that castle. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was his way of like just a little bit of torture, you know, just a little bit of <laughs> right. <laughs> that's so funny. Oh, that's funny. Okay. Which one of these anchor stores moved from Metro Center to Chris Town Spectrum Mall in 2007? 
A, diamonds. B, Robinson's May. C, J.W. Robinson's. Or D, J.C. Penny. Which one of those stores moved from Metro Center into Central Phoenix over at Chris Town Spectrum Mall? Mm-hmm. Remember when they added like Spectrum onto Chris Town? And it, I, you know, and it's like nobody calls it Spectrum. Everyone's no, always Chris Town. So it's so dumb. crazy they even tried to do that. And then right. they stopped calling it Spectrum and then they went back to Chris Town. <laughs> and I don't even know what they call themselves now. I don't know. And what is the issue? Like, why why bother? You know? Right. Exactly. <laughs> it's not going to make of, anyone want to go there anymore. It's just because you changed the name. Well, I mean, and now the concern is the fact that it's like the fact that JCPenney has moved out, the fact that, mm-hmm. um, bum, 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 what's the big place? Costco. Has oh, moved out. Yes, and that was my Costco. Now, 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 now I've got to go all the way over to 44th Street and and Thomas. I think that's where. Yeah, it's and I'm like, no, I'm is. not gonna. Oh, Nick says they still put Spectrum on the light rail maps. How do people know where they're going? <laughs> I would miss my stop because I wouldn't get off at Spectrum because it's not Chris Town. Yeah. Uh All right. Which one of these stores was not on the second floor? A, hot dog on a stick. B, Spencer's. C, hot topic. Hey, Preston, C, you'll be able to chime in, maybe. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> D, vans. So one of those was not on the second floor. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay, so while you're all getting your answers ready, either you're licking the chocolate off your banana, whatever you're doing, no judgment here. Keep calm because we're going to take a little bit of a break because the answers will be coming up very soon. But oh my gosh. So whenever I have a guest on, I always like to say, hey, you know, do you have anything Arizona music wise that you would like to talk about? And so you brought up the hypno twist. <laughs> and so, so years ago, I was shopping in Stinkweeds and this really cool band started playing and it was hypno twist. So uh-huh. I really bought, bought the CD. And then I was like, well, where can I go hear them? And it was <laughs> the most <laughs> diviest of dive bars in the best sense of the word. Yeah. It was indeed the Emerald lounge. Yeah. <laughs> which I honestly didn't realize had been around since the late forties. Really? I didn't know that either. I'm looking at that number going 1949. Wow. Yeah. That's what I, it's like. I found that in the new times wow. they did an article. And so, yeah with Greg and it was like, Oh my gosh, I had no idea. Mm -hmm. And so, so it was at seventh Avenue and McDowell on that kind of Southwest corner Mm -hmm. where now, if you go, you can find (laughs) a Starbucks, (laughs) a Starbucks and a payway, but no dive bar, sadly. Mm -mm. Now there is some bar that I never went to that start above it. I think it was called the sidebar. Yes. And so sidebar actually closed recently closed. And so actually getting ready for this, I discovered that there's a new bar that's moved in. Oh, so, which I didn't realize. Yeah. And I never made it to the sidebar. You know, I think mentally I was boycotting the sidebar, like just because I used to love the Emerald lounge. And when I found out there was some another bar above it, I was like, I'm never going to that dumb bar. <laughs> <laughs> I never, ever, ever step foot in it. <laughs> Oh, it was a fun place. The Emerald closed. Yeah, the Emerald was. I mean, it, I mean, it, I mean it, it, it was nothing like the Emerald Lounge. But, I mean, it, it was it was a little classier of a joint. Oh, a little classier than Emerald <laughs> <laughs> Well, at least the bathroom wasn't plastered with stickers. Yes, yes. I love the Emerald Lounge. I just, I mean, I, I, spent, I spent my a fair share of hours there. <laughs> So why were you there so much? Well, I was there so much because all my friends' bands were playing there at some point, but my bands played there as well. So I was there on, on the stage or in the audience, one of the two, and I just loved it. I loved everything about it. Uh, um, well, let me say that. There are some things I did not love about the Emerald Lounge. Let me, not, let me be clear. <laughs> I didn't love everything about it. <laughs> I loved the Emerald Lounge. You know, it was just it was just the coolest spot and always the best shows were happening there. It was a small spot, but and it would be, I mean, when it was packed, it was, 
there was just something about that. I mean, I love live music as a musician. That's what I, I love to do. And so seeing my friends' bands and being a part of that experience was huge. And then when I was in a band and I was able to play there with my bands, it was just, it was just a cool spot. You know, Greg is cool. Rhonda's cool. It's just cool. <laughs> well, and so I didn't realize I started poking around and looking into the history of Emerald Lounge. My friend Rhonda, her husband owned it. I had no clue. So of course I'm like text texting her earlier today going, Hey, did your husband used to own? And she's like, yep. yep. And I'm like, oh man. <laughs> and then you message me and you're like, my friend's husband, Greg, owns it. I'm like, yeah, of course, you know what I mean? And then my other band, Nunzilla, like your president's talking about, we used to play at the Ruby Room because then they opened up the Ruby Room right, after and that. And the Ruby room, room was the spot, room. you know? Yeah, so the Emerald Lounge and the Ruby Room, just hearts, hearts <laughs> to both of those spots for sure. Well, and then Babs brings up that also that Lost Leaf was there selling artwork before they turn into a bar over on Roosevelt, just south of Roosevelt. Ah, okay. Wait, so wait, the Lost Leaf was what? That was theirs too? Wait, what did he say? What'd so say? Lost Leaf was also in the same building that oh. the lounge was in. And so they both kind of vacated at the same time. I did not. And know. so when Greg went off to open up Ruby Room, it's like then they they found a location south yeah. of Roosevelt. South of Ro yes, so yes, yes, yes. So basically, it's a little bar, and so there's yeah. still uh, so it really is still a good place to just kind of go hear live music that's not necessarily going to sell out some of yeah. the larger venues. That yeah. is just more there. Well, here's something I'll share. This little fun fact is that um, so my band Nunzilla that we we went on um, hiatus, and actually we're still on hiatus. That's what we that's what we we never broke up. Like we just still are. We're like we're going on hiatus. We need to take a break, and we did, and we still are. But we got together for a um, impromptu reunion. Uh, literally within three days, we planned this because another band was supposed to play it. Something happened, whatever. And I was like, you know what, guys, we should get. We should get um, Nunzilla together to fill this gap in this show with this band that I was going to start called the uh, the Power Glides, and it didn't work out. There was a big thing. Anyway, um, we pulled it off and got together after I don't know how many years of not playing together, and we played a show at the Lost Leaf on the night that I was supposed to be debuting in another band that I was I was in, uh, and that place yeah. was packed. And all I remember was playing these songs that I hadn't played for years. None of us had played them at all for years, and we. It was interesting, you know how, and if you, anyone who's watching who's musicians and, and knows what happens when things just lock in, like where it all just comes back, you know, in that way. And we were that kind of band. We all always had the same members. We never changed anything. It was always perfection. Anyway, we came together and played that. And I just remember playing and the floor and the lost leaf was like moving. And I'm like, are we, is this, are, there's a lot of people in here. Is this safe? Like it was just, it was so packed and it was so much fun. And that was the only time I ever played at the Lost Leaf was that particular show. And it was an amazing experience to get, you know, that band back together for this impromptu reunion that nobody knew was coming. <laughs> it, we just did it. <laughs> it was a lot of fun though. Well, and Lost Leaf is still doing things. I was reading, they're doing things outside. So you oh, can okay. still go and hang out and hear some live music and have some and hang out with friends yeah i need to go and check so it out we're trying to be as safe as we all can be in this moment yes safe as we can be that's right all right all right so who's ready for some answers Ooh. now that we've talked a little bit about emerald lounge what an amazing place it was it was so i mean that's kind of where it's like that was kind of it's like i was going when i didn't even know anybody i mean i just pretty much moved to arizona and i plopped myself in there and well, see, and that's why I say you and I probably met. That's like, you know, <laughs> probably did. I have no doubt. Because <laughs> either for a hypnotwist show or with the crying shames, that was my band that I used to play with there with the with the hypnotwists. And we probably ran into each other and just forgot. <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah. Because I well, I wasn't quite this fabulous at that point. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you left memorable. Is that what you're trying to say? What are you talking about? <laughs> I was, I've always been this fabulous, by the way, uh, those in you, the audience. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've always been fabulous, but just not, I wasn't quite as distinctive with now, like now the goatee that's like down to my belly button. almost. Yeah. <laughs> so what's this? The answers. How does this work? I'm so excited. Oh my this. gosh. Okay. So what <laughs> year did Metro Center open for business? 1973. Yeah. I wasn't even born yet. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was. They actually opened October first of seventy three. 
Wow, Metro opens its doors tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, that was, I mean, and it's like when it opened its doors, it was being heralded as like one of the largest malls in the country. Really? I mean, yeah, I mean, it was, it was, it was quite the to do. I think I read somewhere that it was the, uh, it was also the only two story one. Ah. Like in, in, in the, you know, in the state or something like that, it was a big deal that it was two stories, you know, at that time as well. So, yeah, I mean, the mall I grew up with back in Indiana, it was only one story. So I remember going to a mall that was two stories or one that had an ice rink and was just like, oh, they have an ice rink. How decadent. See, and, and Metro Center was really all I knew. So I was, I was spoiled then. Cause I was like, I mean, I knew Chris Town, but Metro Center was my jam. I mean, I live right by it. So to yeah. me, it was like malls were just two stories. Chris Town was like junk, <laughs> you know, <laughs> with its one story. <laughs> so, all right. So what anchor stores or how many anchors were there at Metro Center? Five. Five, five anchors. So that probably was a big deal too, because that seems like a lot. That is a lot. I mean, yeah. and it was like, I mean, you had diamonds with that really distinctive building. Goldwaters, again, with that distinctive entryway. Mm. The Broadway. The Broadway. Rose. Um, Rhodes was there. As well as then Sears, I guess they were actually part of the development when it was being built. So they were on, on board from the get-go. And so, and then the Broadway too, because the Broadway was on the side that you would enter if you were coming from Dunlap. And, and that's the way I always enter because I lived on Dunlap, you know? So the Broadway was always what I saw, you know, coming up to the, that, that was my entrance point, <laughs> you know, to the mall. Oh, somebody is saying, I didn't realize that the Diamonds building, which is now the Dillard's is still, that is still open. I thought the entire thing was shut down. But so, I guess um as to for what? Saying, <laughs> well, that it's kind of like it's kind of like the stuff that everyone brings back to Dillard's. They just kind of dump it. And so you get to go through like cheap clothes and all kinds of things. Like the out an outlet? Yeah, so kind of like a like a Dillard's outlet type thing. Oh, I didn't know that. Hmm. I didn't know that. Either. I thought everything was just gone, gone, gone. Mm-hmm. So who knew? Anna put mind blown. Anna, why is your mind blown? Anna kept the Catalonote, Catalonate. That's a cool last name. Anna, why is your mind blown? I want to know. Is she can she can't be <laughs> which which thing blew your mind? All of this is mind blowing to me. So which part blew your mind? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <clears throat> so Gavin is asking if Metro Center was a success from it from when it first opened. And from everything I've read, I mean it it, it didn't let people down. I mean it was drawing people from all over the Valley to come to Metro center. So I think it was indeed a huge success. Interesting. I, I think so too. I mean, I guess if it was the, the biggest mall around, you know, in, in our state for sure. Um, pretty cool. Donna says, Hey, Donna Spar Sparacco matter. Donna. Uh, she's so awesome. She's a good, good, good friend of mine. Actually, she's the one who recruited me into legal shield, which is one of my businesses six ah. and a half years ago. She's like, grab your bass girl and come on over. Cause her husband, Jeff plays guitar. Yeah. Why are we not playing guitar with, with Jeff and, and me and the bass I'm in. And I have an acoustic bass, Donna, tell him that, um, that I can bring over as well. Cause I think he typically plays acoustic guitar. So we're making dates while we're on here. <laughs> Excuse me while I set a couple of appointments. <laughs> no worries. I mean, well, that's the fun thing. It was like when we did Superior, actually had, we were connecting history because it was like people that didn't know each other, but like their families have known each other were connecting. So that's yeah. half the fun is getting people together and suddenly you find out, oh, wait a minute. Haven't seen you in a while. Let's chat. Yeah. So it's Very all cool. good. I love this. Oh, she says, Anna says that she, her mind blown. She doesn't remember that many anchors. So uh, she's talking about the five stores. Like she didn't realize there was that many, you know, big department stores. And I, and I, and I wonder, and even though I think Sears was involved from the very beginning, I don't think there were one, I don't think they were there when the mall originally opened in 73. I think it took on them a little mm -hmm. bit of time to move in. So I don't know if they were doing a special building just for them or something, hmm. but I remember seeing something along that lines. So that's why I was like, you know, this could be a trick question. It's like, well, how many stores did it open with? Ah. So, because sometimes we're kind of prone to having some of those trick questions. Uh, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
All right. So the mall scene from Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure were filmed at Metro Center. What year did that movie debut? It was that little video clip. It is. You're so cool. As soon as you say the answer, I'm going to click on it. We're going to. So come on, come on, woman. Drink, drink that drink. Come oh, on. Do I say the answer? Yeah, I'm going to make you say the answer. So that way I can click. Oh, okay. But can't they see it on the screen? They can. But... Oh, but I got to read out loud. Oh, yeah. the answer is. <laughs> D, 1989. <laughs> All right, let's see if this actually, I've never tried this, so I'm intrigued to see if it works. Open, oh, that's not working well. Ah. Uh. Oh, I guess we get no. Oh, shucks. I know. I'm dang. Okay. Well, I know, you know, sometimes you try things at the last minute to see what's going to happen. And, oh, wait a minute. I bet I know. Oh. Hey. Why be soft and flabby when you can be firm and trim? When you can have a body that cries out, look at me, admire me. With our specialized weight training and aerobics program, we can help you attain the kind of body you've only dreamed of having. Let's go, ladies. Look at them in Metro. You a musician? <laughs> well, here. Try this. <laughs> He's like, where is that coming from? <laughs> I know. And I was saying the same thing. I was like, look, it's Jane Wheeland. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And he's like, where's that come from? You don't need me, you know? <laughs> right, exactly. Like, we don't need me anymore. <laughs> Wait, that's hot dog on the stick. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, yeah, it is. That's totally hot dog on the stick. Like, literally, it was a manual process. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> If you've never seen that, hey, someone who ever's watching this, if you know what I'm talking about, about the chicks making lemonade and hot dog on a stick, and you ever saw that actually happen, please put that in the chat. Because <laughs> <laughs> we walk by and laugh all the time. Like, look at them jumping up and down on this weird apparatus with a handle. It's like they actually, they were like jumping on something that I think spun and mixed the lemonade, like a big barrel. Very, very interesting. Ah, uh, see, and Amber remembers when the boys would go watch the lemonade making. Mm. <laughs> they, would, I'm sure they probably would. <laughs> they wore their little hats and the little outfits, and they're like bouncing on this thing. I'm sure the boys did go watch them. <laughs> oh, and then John says, Yes, we did, but it was to laugh at them. It was <laughs> <laughs> the groovy lemonade. The lemonade was delicious. And those those cheese sticks on the stick, cheese sticks on a stick, hot dog on a stick, it was all good. Burlington Socks. Wait, I'm gonna have to go back and watch this movie. So I, can, I know. I, I have a feeling that PJ was watching this on VHS when he was making the cocktail. It's it's like a good movie, you know. I know. I haven't seen it in so long, so it's like I think it's definitely time to go back and do that again. That's awesome. Thanks, Marsha, for putting that little clip for us. That's cool. Yeah. No, actually, they were, we were trying to actually do, there was the Phoenix Film Society, and they were trying to do a 30th anniversary showing of it at Metro Center. And that was all when it was kind of, is it opening? Is it closing? What's going on? Mm -hmm. And so we sadly never got a chance to do that. But it would have been so much fun to do Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure inside Metro Center. Yes. <laughs> so cool. So maybe we could still do it at the at the Dillard's dump. At the Dillard's dump. <laughs> at the Dillard's dump. Woo hoo. Woo. <laughs> Not the same thing. <laughs> oh, and now I can't stop it from playing. Oh. 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 The new Jade. That was that God that, has that been there that long? The um the Chinese place at at at, at you know the Chinese food place in the food court. I think I just saw it in the thing and I had no idea. I mean, there's always been the place where you can go get the Chinese food, but I didn't realize it'd been there that long. <laughs> so, <laughs> wow. All so, right. And then everyone's favorite. Well, actually the, well, it's not the only amusement park in town, but. 
it is. Oh, okay. So Castles and Coasters started as C golf and stuff. <laughs> what a cool name. What a cool name to put in stuff. <laughs> exactly. Because they had golf and all these other things, which you could see, but I guess I had to include golf because if you're looking too busy, looking at the, the roller coaster, roller coaster. You see the miniature golf, which was so much fun. So much fun. And golf and stuff was, oh my gosh, love golf and stuff. It was just cool. The way it was set up in there where it had like the different, levels where you you know of video games where you know it's a big huge circle inside of there with all the video games because you could be wherever you were you can kind of see everything that was going on at least inside you know right you can see across you can play the games down in the pit and then of course the miniature golf and uh the roller coaster i mean it's literally the coolest amusement park that we have right it, you know, it's only yeah, really I, mean, have, I, mean, right? I mean, you get all the bad prizes you can win. I mean, I think I still have my switchblade comb. <laughs> switchblade comb. I'm sure I got like a power ring or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> a little plastic <laughs> ring to cut my finger and I'm trying to fit it on. It doesn't, it's too small. that pinches my finger. <laughs> you know? Exactly. I love golf and stuff. I mean, you know, I mean, as a kid, I mean, really, like if you lived nearby there, which, which I did for many years. I mean, I spent most of my life, I think on Dunlap. Um, cause I went to Cortez and I went there all four years. Oh, by the way, and Alice Cooper went to Cortez. Fun fact. Um, oh. so if you went to Cortez, I mean, I went to Cortez, I worked at DeVry right there, uh, right there for 13 years. <laughs> so I was there, I worked at the art Institute of Phoenix, which is right next to DeVry. And I lived in the apartment complexes next door two of the different apartment complexes right there. So that whole little strip from like 35th Avenue on Dunlap to 20 to the freeway. I mean, that was my little stomping ground for many, many years. And then even as an, an adult, so Metro was, that's where I went. When John was saying that the mm -hmm. roller coaster didn't come until the nineties. Really? So I guess the stuff would have been the arcade. The arcade. Yeah. So it was golf and arcade. Golf and arcade. <laughs> so it doesn't, that doesn't sound nearly as much fun as stuff. That's not as fun. I'd like to get it in some stuff. <laughs> not as fun as stuff. And it was cool looking, like the whole castle thing, which I, you know, they changed the name to Castles and Coasters. I'm like, that's dumb. But I understood there was a coaster and there and there are castles. So technically it made sense. But there's still but golf. Still, there's still golf and there's still stuff. So exactly. I, I felt no need to change the name whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it alone. You know? It was probably a huge rebranding effort that took a, yeah. a lot of people, a lot of time to come up with that. <laughs> right. How many, how much money did people get paid to come up with that name to change it to a, to a name that it didn't need to be changed to in the first place, you right. know? So, but, but yeah, it was like a cool like spot. Spectrum Mall. Yeah. Did it looked really game. cool. I saw a YouTube video um, on golf and stuff. I looked it up and it was someone, it had to be eighties or whatever, who took their camera. They probably had a big old, you know, camera on their oh, shoulder. Yeah. Kind of thing. And, like, the size yeah. of a set. and they were filming the whole thing. And I just, it reminded me just how cool golf and stuff, like the aesthetics of it, the style, the castles. I mean, it was just a, a cool looking theme theme park you know i guess it's a park yeah oh nick and babs are also saying they used to have like bumper boats do i remember the bumper boats i don't Ooh. wow no by the time i got here bumper boats were gone and some sort of like little race car yes car yes okay yes. Car things so i forgot all about that wow racy cars and bumper boats. okay i totally remember now gosh man that was a long time ago bumper cars my favorite amber says Oh, the stuff was all oh, the inner tube things. Yeah, the inner cars. Yeah, they were like inner tubes. I don't think they were actually both. I think it more was like a little tube thing. Oh, like an inner tube that you sat on and that sounds yeah. rather dangerous. <laughs> Bab says, I'd watch the hot dog girls pumping lemonade today. <laughs> Someone <laughs> describe it in depth and I'll make the videos. <laughs> I can describe it for you, Bab. <laughs> Bab will she will make the videos of that. I must say, she she would. Yes, she but would. <laughs> without a doubt. Very cool. Very cool. <laughs> All, All right. right. So, which one of these stores was not one of the original anchors? It was Nordstrom. Indeed, and that's why they got no photo. They got nothing because. There was nothing for Nordstrom's. Nothing for Nordstrom. Who got that? Who got that right? Put it in the chat if you got that right. We want to know. Anyone guess Nordstrom? 
Of course, you'll probably say now that you did, but you know. No, I bet I, this crowd, a lot of these folks were are like knowing too much stuff. So they, there's no way they would have gotten that wrong. <laughs> so me, on the other hand, I had to look it up because I was like, I don't know. Yeah. All right. What year did Vans announce there would be a Vans skate park at the mall? 2001. The announcement came. That's like 20 years ago. I wow. can do a little. I can do a little bit of math, and I can do that math. And <laughs> that is like when I saw that, I was like, "Really? Where does the time go? Just poof, gone." Exactly. I mean, two thousand seems like so long ago, but it really wasn't. Mm -mm. I mean, I, I can remember being here, and I think they announced it, and I was like, since I wasn't a skater, I was like, "Oh," but I still would go and watch. Absolutely. And I was a skater and we were like, oh my God, there's going to be a skate park in the mall. Are you kidding? You know, so I have some friends who, you know, we built the Desert West Park. And that was the first skate park that there was around. The first outdoor public skate park was Desert West. And I think we broke ground, oh my God, 87, I'm going to say, was the year that we broke ground for that park that sounds right 87 97 97 oh my god okay i'm losing track <laughs> it's been a long time right 97 it could have been 87 97 all right and so that was huge huge that we had a, a you know an, in, an outdoor park that but when there was no park and then you know we spent all this time and energy building that park and getting the city to build it you know count out count out everybody who's probably listening knows all about that but that was huge. And then all of a sudden after that, every other city wanted a park. It was like, if you build it, they'll come. Like we had to raise money. We had to raise money to build the Desert West and show the city that we were serious and we wanted a park. Like you need to build a skateboard park. This is important. This is a thing. And then once we did that, they put in the rest of the money. We built the park, designed the park and everything. And then all of a sudden PV, Scottsdale, all these other parks pop up and no one had to raise any money. They just wrote into the budget, you know, but um so when Vans put that park in the in Metro, that's a huge deal considering that it was a Metro Center and that's where we all hung out. It's like, wow, there's gonna be a skate park in here. It's phenomenal. Like it was just really, really cool. But I didn't realize it was 2001 until I saw that. I was like, wow, 20 years. Yeah, I know. And I don't know if it made it into the final plans, but I know when they were talking about redoing Hans Park, there was talk of putting in a skate park there. There was. There was. So mm -hmm. I, don't know if, I don't know if they've got final plans or what, but... I don't think so. But yeah, that's right. Hans Park was another spot that would have made sense, you know, for right. a park yeah. for sure. Right. Yeah. It makes sense to put a skate park everywhere, by the way, those of you who are listening. <laughs> Just put a skate park in. <laughs> right. It, it, it like Greg Stanton or yeah. anybody's but, listening. Yeah. It's like Just a skate park, no bikes, no blades, no scooters, skateboard only. Like this kid on the bike here, like this picture with this kid on the bike in the skate park actually angers me by the way. <laughs> so I'm a little bit upset right now because <laughs> now those of you listening who may be judging me right now, I don't care, but I will tell you that um, I love bikes are cool. Blades are cool. Scooters are cool, but I don't necessarily want you in a skate park when I'm in a skate park. <laughs> And let me say the reason why, for those of you who are like, God, what's wrong with her? Like, what is the issue? Everyone's just trying to have fun on their wheeled devices. It's because we move differently. And when you're in a park and everyone is moving in all these different ways on a wheeled vehicle, the last thing you want to do is crash. Okay. And I know how a skateboarder is going to move so I can adjust for that. Right. I can move how I'm going to move and you can see where they're going to go. A bike can turn this way and that way. And a scooter can do the, all these different things. So they're moving in a erratic manner. <laughs> That's how I look at it. So it makes it more dangerous, in my opinion, quite honestly, because you can't really anticipate their path. Everyone's got a line. And and if you run into a bike. With a person on it, there's a lot more things that can hurt you. <laughs> <laughs> there's sharp things there's sharp metal things, things metal things and all kinds of things with if, I, if it's just skateboards we know what we're working with piece of wood trucks four wheels okay and so anyway that's my little soapbox about well, that's like sharing the sidewalk with the scooters those little battery go. powered things it's there like you. oh my gosh there so. you go yeah so i'm not being you know biased i'm just being safe <laughs> In, oh completely i agree with you 
All right. What was the name of the ice skating rink that was located under the food court? Metro, Metro Ice Palace. Yeah. Ice Palace. I was looking at the things because I just saw Nick. Nick says he got 50% so far. Ah, see, and that's usually, and that's pretty good for our trivia. So, all right, all right, he's rocking it. He's rocking it. Okay, cool. So our, then oh, I did and also include a photo of the lounge. Look at that. That was the old airplane. Yes. Oh man. So, which I've only heard stories about, but it sounds really cool. And you know what's interesting when I talk to people, uh, people who don't know that there was an ice skating rink and have told them, yeah, I used to have an ice skating rink. They're like, no, what do you mean? I'm like, no, underneath the food court. They're like, what do you mean? <laughs> I'm like, well, it's hard to explain because again, you know, they, you know, floored that up. Right. But you used to be able right. to stand in the food court up there, you know, and look over into the ice skating rink. And I'm going to say, and I'm, I can't believe I'm going to admit this, but someone I know that looks like me at one point maybe took an orange Julius that they bought at the orange Julius that was right there. And oh. maybe poured it over onto the ice skating rink. Oh, maybe someone who looked like me maybe did that. <laughs> <laughs> there was an um, orange Julius. They just run out on that. So they're yeah. not going to come and get you. Yeah. You know, but there was an orange Julius right there up against the, the, you know, where you could look over and um, you know, it was quite, you know, it was very cool to watch people ice skating down there, but I never actually ice skated at that rink. So if anyone put in the chat, did you skate at the rink or not skate at the rink? I never actually did. So when Metro Center was closing, it was kind of like there was like the last drive around, like the last few weekends, there were these big drives cruising the mall. And so I was like, so one day I just go walking in the mall and I loved the fact that you had parents dragging their kids around talking about the history of the mall and like oh. this is where mom used to work. This is where we met and things like that. So at one point I'm walking by this couple, we're all masked up and I hear her say, oh, this is where the ice skating used to be. So I go over and start talking to them. And all of a sudden, it's like the, the guy is like, Marshall. And I'm like, it was my friend Will and his girlfriend. It was so funny because we were all masked up. It was like, had no idea it was Will. So so that was a fun way to connect in the last closing days of the mall. That is cool. And I missed I missed that. I did not go uh, to the last cruise and to the last thing. I was bummed about that. But, um, but I was, you know, it's interesting with Metro Center the way things were going, you wondered how much longer it would last. Right. But then right. part of me was like, Oh, well, it'll just kind of be open forever in its um, altered state. <laughs> it would be. Um, so when they announced that it was closing, I was sad. I was like, no way. Like you can't really close the mall. Can you, but I guess you can. Except the Dillard's dump is still open. So <laughs> the you can close the mall. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that's the amazing thing was, I mean, it shut down, but to watch the, because uh, it was really one of the first things for people to do outside of the house. So you saw all these cars cruising around full of families because yeah. they were just so happy to get out of the house. That, right. And go do something. Now here I see Nick says he doesn't remember skating there. He says they always took him to Great Skate, which I remember Great Skate. Yes. Over on 43rd Avenue in Peoria. <laughs> so that was the spot. Um, the Farrells used to take their skate zoo. Their, their zoo around the ice skating rink used to skate their zoo. What is that? What do you mean the zoo, Farrells? Like animal zoo or a bunch of kids zoo? Which do you mean? <laughs> Family 87 uh, eating up there. Didn't the OJ hang out over the rink on the food court side? Yeah, the Orange Julius. Yes, it was right there. That was the little spot, right? Very cool. Very cool. I like seeing the comments. Ah, oh, great skate. Esther's like, oh, great skate. Amber, great skate. She lived by Rolero back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Rolero. Well, and so Keely said that she used to actually go ice skating. She was from Tuba City. And so. That is cool. Yes, the girls ice cream. And so, yeah, I mean, you could really see the outpouring of emotion on the, I mean, walking through the mall or even on those drives. I mean, mm -hmm. even though I didn't grow up at the Mesro Center, I grew up at a different mall. That is nothing like, I don't even know if it's still open, but I completely understand that that was our childhood growing up. Yes. Those are important memories. They shaped us. Very <laughs> they yeah. did. That's what we did for fun. You know, some people grew up on farms. I grew up in Metro. <laughs> 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 <You know? laughs> 
<laughs> defines us, right? <laughs> yeah, and it was great to see all the communities coming out. You had the different car clubs sitting there with the cars. Mm -hmm. Some of them were driving around. It was so much fun. There was a radio station that had set up. Oh, to be blasting music all night long. So that, that's cool. That's cool. Well, yeah. Well, you know, Metro Parkway, right? The big loop is just. I mean, it made sense. Why not cruise that thing? Oh, and then so someone put in the chat if they remember that there's a fountain that's right on 29th Avenue and Dunlap um, in the Metro Metro Center uh, Marketplace. There's like that big strip mall on 29th Avenue when you're going into Metro Center from Dunlap. And it used to have water. It doesn't have water. Because I actually drove by the other day the other day when I was thinking about this. And I kind of looked around and, and drove around the loop. And it was a very sad sight to see. Don't do not do that. <laughs> don't go there and drive around Metro now. All of you watching, don't do it. Just keep the memories as you have them in your head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. I almost forgot. So because we were doing Metro Center. Oh, God. What do you have? I, I had some friends stop by Romanelli's. And bring <gasps> Romanelli's. Romanelli. You got a cannoli for Romanelli's? I, yeah. Ooh. Oh, see? So, yes, I got the lovely pink box within oh. a cannoli. Oh, I am jelly. <laughs> oh, mm. man. So, Romanelli's, because I went to Cortez, right? And so, Romanelli's was our spot, obviously, for lunch. Every day, we'd have 30 minutes, and we would hustle down to, you know, to Romanelli's, 30 minutes, and get a deli special, which was like a half of a sub with a with a Coke, and then maybe you can get like one of those big pickles. They had the big pickles and we would sit there and that was our, that was our spot. The guys who worked there were super cool. The the parents who owned it were cool. And then I wound up going back a few years ago and the guys who were like teen, like probably their young, maybe early twenties or teens when I was going there, they weren't much older than us, but they like seemed that they probably had to, they had to work there. <laughs> you know. Now they like running the place. <laughs> <you know? laughs> and so, but yeah, Romanelli's was the spot and, Man, such good food and just good people. Oh my gosh, the best cannolis in town. I love the fact that they don't fill them until you order them. So the oh. shell stays nice and crispy. Yum. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, I, I spent a decade in New York. So it's like, I'm like, I was looking for a real cannoli and I was like, oh, Romanelli's. Yes. That's where you go. That's so cool. You went to Romanelli. So yeah, put in the chat if you know about Romanelli's. Oh, and then I was going to ask the fountain. Okay, the, the Lamps Plus fountain. Yes. Did you ever see the Lamps Plus fountain with soap suds in it? <laughs> Did you ever you out there with a big jug of laundry soap? Listen, I don't remember. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying that there may have been a time when there was suds in that fountain. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. I don't know who did it. I don't remember. I don't recall. <laughs> you know? But if anyone's ever seen that actually happen, then put that in there. Cause I'd be curious if anyone ever saw that. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. So, all right. I think we've got a few more questions to go. Okay. So Ooh. what was the first mall in Phoenix? Park central y'all. Park Central and Mall. Indeed, the late 50s it opened its doors. Yeah. Man, Park Central. Shopping City. Is that what that says? Shopping City. Yeah. That's a cool picture, too. Yeah, that was actually a postcard. So I was like, oh, my gosh. I mean, it's like, I mean, and now it looks so different today. I mean, they've done a lot of updating of it. Mm -hmm. um, there's um, Crichton College going to be going in. But I don't it may already be there. I don't know. So, yeah. So, I mean, they're really trying to change the face of Park Central. Well, I wonder to what, <laughs> you know, well, it's, it's not going to be a mall anymore. Well, it's like there's still there's still food services around. I mean, mm -hmm. you've got you've got Isn't the bar juice in there. Yeah, I think there's a Jamba juice. There's some other restaurants. So I think it's really mainly for like some of the businesses around there to have lunch spots. Mm hmm. That makes sense because there are a lot of businesses right around there that need it. Need right. a, I mean, they just walk over, grab some right. lunch. So, right. well, remember Cruising Central? I mean, Park Central was this, that was the hub, you know? Oh, indeed it was. Cruising, Cruising mean, Central. Was McDonald's down to Bob's Big Boy and back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, back and forth, back and forth. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, what year did do we happen to know? I mean, I don't think that was a question what year that was. It wasn't. It was late 50s. I want to say it was like 57, 58 when it opened its doors. Okay. Wow. 
So and that, and that the most probably they did like an anniversary, I think, thing for it. Well, they did like 1960, kind of the the booklet for it. Okay. It well, based on it. based on these cars, this probably was you know right opening time, you know, right around that time. Yeah, exactly. I think it was. I mean, when there was a Goldwaters there. New. Um, yeah. So, and I, I know it's, at some point the basement of that Goldwaters actually somebody had used it for a theater for something. Mm. I know people kept saying, oh, see, and there goes Anna. See, I love the fact people like fact checking us. It's like, yep. So Anna's like, oh, 1957. I'm like, and I think that's indeed because I knew it was late fifties. Okay. So when judging by all those beautiful cars. Yeah. John says twice pa past the same point in an hour was illegal. So they used to switch cars at circuit city and then try to find the girls in the other car they were chasing. <laughs> 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 yeah. Oh, that is funny. Right, right. We did drive around, but never got out of the car. Okay, that's what Dana says. Never got out of the car. Yeah, no, cruising while you never got out of the car. Yeah. Because you're be cruising. Yeah. Playing your tunes and your bad stereo setup as loud as you could, so. Yeah. Matt says he could never get lunch that fast at Romanelli's. Or Nick says that. Nick, did you go to Cortez? <laughs> he must have went to Cortez. He says he didn't do the hot sandwich math and kept ordering meatballs. I would just do the the deli special. It was like two ninety nine. That's all I could afford anyway. <laughs> you know, it was just like lunch meats, like bologna, and I don't know. It's probably not bologna, but you know, something like that. But he, he must have went to Cortez too. Oh, That's my good. family used to eat at Ponchos. Ponchos. That was on the outside of Metro. Ponchos used to have the little um, the little flag. God, there was something with a flag that either you would put, like you would put the oh, flag up. More stuff. I've heard about this. I didn't remember it was ponchos. So you would put the flag up if you wanted like more tortillas or something. Yeah. Right. And then they would come and put it down. Yeah. <laughs> that was like right. Ponchos. So good. And then the Swensons at Metro, Metro Center Complex, both closed a long time ago. Yeah. But sorry to see those places closed too. Yeah. So that's very, very cool. I, I love, let me just say, I just love, um, and, and, you know, this is my first real experience, you know, with your show. And first, I just want to say I appreciate you so much. This is so much fun. And I love the the good feelings from the walk down memory lane, you know. And um, but everyone participating and commenting and telling us, you teaching us stuff, teaching me stuff, you know, oh, about exactly. things. Well, that's the fun. It's everybody's learning. I love it. I love it. And then people putting in dates for us, you know, keeping us. And I assume if we got some of these things wrong, they probably let us know, hey, that's not the right answer. <laughs> But we did our research too, as well. <laughs> but uh, right. but this well, is and so cool. about the super salad building. Mm -hmm. It's like so. From my understanding, that building still stands even with the new light rail stuff going through. Yep. It's like it goes nearby, but does not disturb that building. Does not. And the super salad. She's talking about the super salad building, right? Yeah. Um, I think I read that the the guy who the architect who did that building did the building on Central. Indeed, Sarmiento. Yeah. Okay, yes, so, yes. So he did the punch card building as well as Super Salad, which was originally a Western bank. So it was really built as, as a bank building. Okay. I remember when Super Salad. Salad. Super Salad was cool. I haven't been to one lately, but it was like, a, you know, such a cool concept and uh, just good deal. Well, I love that Anna asked, does a cannoli go with an old fashioned? I was like, Anna, a good oh, cannoli goodness. goes with everything. And an old fashioned goes with everything. Exactly. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> some sort of mid-century modern thing yeah it's really cool yeah really cool it is indeed oh yeah and Est esta says yes it was a western banker originally she's school she's already schooling us on that one <laughs> so esta you know i mean anything that really nothing is protected unless it's on the national register and there's federal funds involved mm. so yeah so even a building that is on the Arizona Register of Historic Places or even National, it could still be torn down. It just, it's like if it's 50 years or older, it takes, um, I think there's a six month stay of demolition. Oh. From the permit, from when the permit is pulled. And that's actually new dating from the David Wright House over in Arcadia that you can't pull a permit and then immediately demo the building. So you got to wait. Okay. All you right. got to wait. Good to know. Good to know. And I said that uh, someone said that uh, Greg Stanton, Congressman Greg Stanton, went to Cortez. Who knew? Ah, um, Keeley knew. Thanks, Keeley. <laughs> yes, 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 he, he has good stories. So interesting. I'll be hitting Greg up saying, "Hey, Greg, what you doing?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my friend a friend of mine teaches uh who went there she teaches she teaches there 
now. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that was time. It was kind of cool. I'm like, dude, you never got out of that place. Because <laughs> you know I mean? she's been teaching there a long time. <laughs> it's like, she's like, I never left. <laughs> you know? Well, that's like, welcome back, Cotter. It's like where he goes back to the school where he was teaching. Yep. So this is cool. All right. So which one of these anchor stores moved from Metro Center to Christown Spectra Mall? That would be D, J.C. Penny. <laughs> that left. I wonder why they left. They get kicked out, maybe. Hmm. I don't know. But now, I mean, now it's like I know the one here is closing, if not already closed. Is it already closed? The one at Christown? I, 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 I thought I saw something. I knew they were closing, but I didn't see the date. And, you know, and it's like in this moment, dates are just so kind of nebulous. It's like, yeah. so who knows? Yeah, I think everything's closed. <laughs> <laughs> I know it was. Well, it was it was like so actually one of one of the folks that is here tonight. Um, the Herd Museum is open. Oh. Which I was actually able to go catch one of the most amazing exhibits I've seen in Arizona. Because Lisa was like, hey, you know, the herd is open. I was like, I had no way. I thought yeah, the museums were closed. Me too. And so then it was like, and then the next weekend I went to the Phoenix Art Museum because it's like, again, everyone's masked. And there's probably so not really anybody in there anyway, right? Yeah. Was it, was it, you know, dead? Like, you know, meaning not a lot of people? Yeah, there weren't a lot of people. I mean, so museums are still open. They just have a lot fewer Number of folks. Oh, and Pam's watching. Hello, Pam. So yeah, so I she is saying that JC Penney's at Christown is now closed. Okay. And I would say, and and Pam would be an expert in that. So all right. Yeah. All right. So Wait, yeah. Catch up here with uh oh Nancy says Poncho's all you can eat, the table flags. Yeah, had the best phony chili rianos. <laughs> Nancy, why was it phony? <laughs> I know. I'm like, how do you make faux oh, chillerianos? Yeah, yeah. Tell, I'm, I'm really curious about that. Tell, tell us why that is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. The sopapillas with the ser were served when the flag went up at Poncho's. Yes, nice sopapillas with the honey on them. The fat, the flag went up a lot with our family. So yummy. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> and, and Babs is saying, I mean, and pretty much almost, I think every museum is open and they're just trying to maintain numbers. Got it. Well, so yeah. they're not, I don't even think most of them are even reaching their max number. I got to make a trip to a couple of museums then. It's been a while. Yeah, I, I know the herd is going to be opening up a new exhibit fairly soon. Okay. And I think same thing with the Phoenix Art Museum. So. Very cool. Very cool. But you know, there's plenty of other museums to check out and see what's there. Yeah. So. And it's interesting, that even, if, even if you if you don't want to leave your house, what's interesting, one of the things that's come with our um, new situation here during the pandemic is that lots of places, museums and zoos are now, you know, live streaming different things and letting you have experiences online to be able to check out their spots, which is something I will just say for the record, they always could have done, but right. no, but well, no one like, was forced to. <laughs> and so right. and uh, I think those are some of the things that are going to stick around after this. I mean, my friend so. almost every night is attending some international thing with a museum or gallery. Yes. I mean, she's like posting on Facebook. Oh, I'm doing this. I'm doing that. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, that she's is, traveling all over the globe. That is cool. And I've been trying to get some things as well, you know, just catching here and there. But what really dawned on me was one day I was on Instagram and uh, I follow the Phoenix Zoo because I'm in Phoenix, right? And so I follow the Phoenix Zoo. And one day it pops up. This was probably June or something like that. Pops up on my phone. We're live at the Phoenix Zoo in the morning, you know, watching, going around, showing you the animals. And they were driving around the Phoenix Zoo on a little cart. Oh, my gosh. Showing you what was going on in the morning, waking up animals, you know, <laughs> basically going around, showing you. And I, it was only a 15-minute broadcast, but it was just enough for me to take a break while I'm drinking my coffee and watch what was happening at the zoo. And I'm thinking, wow. Like, this is so cool. So then I started following all the zoos around the world and museums and stuff to see if, you know, aquariums and, and things to see if other places were doing that. And then they all eventually started doing some form of that, you know, where I could be checking out places. Now, I might not go to New Zealand to check out the zoo, but I can watch it online and go see what kind of animals they have. Fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. So I hope that, you know, even though that was created out of necessity, that 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 they don't stop doing that kind of thing, you know, because and I, again, well. I, mean, I just saw where Phoenix Art Museum, it's like is getting is going to and they're going to do some sort of an online presence for an upcoming exhibit, which I think is really great. Sh and everything, everything should be hybrid now. Being at its best. So everything many organizations be are kind of figuring out what's going on. I mean, 
I'm going to be having some conversations, hopefully with like Arizona Opera and Arizona Theater Company to mm -hmm. kind of figure out if there's some sort of a collaboration we can do. Mm -hmm. so, and so I think I think there's all kinds of things that people are now looking to see what they can do in a different way. Absolutely. As they should. And everything should have a hybrid because think about the people who can't physically leave their homes anyway. And well, the right. places that they are able to now visit that they weren't able to because it wasn't an option. And now it is an option. You can't don't take that option away from them now. Yeah, you know, I so. had some random chat that had people from all over the country. And somebody mentioned about how they really appreciated the, the whole aspect of the virtual program because they don't have to leave their house. And a guy chimes in and it's like, you know, I'm in a wheelchair. I have, I, I'm in a second floor apartment. I can't leave. There you I'm go. out of my house in like two, three years, which there is just it's like, wow. Yeah. And now he can oh. check out the zoo or, or check out these international, you know, events. I know me as a business owner, I would do on everything I do online anyway. And this, it really opened my mind and eyes to, wow, I can help people all over the world with my coaching and with, or with legal shield or whatever. Um, and I don't want to go back to not being able to do that. I'm just not going to. And so as we open our minds to the creativity of what can we really do now that we've got the interwebs and it's hop off and popping, like right. how do we really like maximize this experience um, for people who couldn't otherwise have an experience? And even like what you're doing right now is part of that. And it's just, it's amazing. So it's just really yeah, cool. And then I'm going to pop on. So my friend, Lisa, it's like, you all love the next big gallery show at the herd. Leon Polk Smith, hard edge, minimal abstract art from the fifties. I'm already sold. I mean, you've got hey. my, my favorite words in there already. Yes. So yeah. From the fifties. Yeah. Other Native American artist opens February 5th. Okay. That's good to know that we have an opening date. Thanks. Right. L.I. Takata. So yeah. I'm digging it. So, so Kenyatta, so let's make, so let's make a date and we'll go to the herd together. Let's do it. We'll, we'll both be masked up. So I am safe. Yes. So I, you that know, so so we'll, be, we'll be masked and socially distanced. Yes, absolutely. Exactly. Let's exactly. Go. <laughs> and look at that amazing art. Yes. I'm in. Very good. And then, so Nick did say he is from the class of 96 from Cortez. 96. Uh, I'm 93, Nick. So were we there at the same time? Maybe. I'll say there might have been like a year or two, a year where you guys might have overlapped. Yeah, there might have been one overlap there. Yeah, I went there all all four years, and I'm the I'm the class of nine to three. For those of you who are like, I wonder how old she is. She looks so young, you know. Um, <laughs> yes, I I do. Thank you very much. <laughs> For those of you who are like, so Kiana doesn't, Kiana oh doesn't look like she's so aged a, a year. Right. By the way, I haven't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm still, I'm still 24. <laughs> I love that Nancy then brought up that Alice graduated from Cortez in 64. Oh, wow. He probably shopped at Park Central Mall. Yes, he did. Now, here's the thing. Now, now I don't know, but I'm just going to say this. So there are a couple of desks at, there were a couple of desks at Cortez that had Alice Cooper was here carved into the desks, right? And we used to all speculate because some of these desks were very old. Like it were like, it could have been, you know? <laughs> But we would be like, no, you know, because anyone can carve Alice Cooper who was here <laughs> in a desk, <laughs> you know. Um, but we would like to imagine, like, I'm sitting at a desk. I'm like, Alice Cooper sat at this desk. Check it out, dude. You know? <laughs> so I'm actually trying to get him on as a guest. I have a friend who may who says she has contact with him. Okay. I've, I've only talked to his nonprofit Kids Rock, but okay. I'm like, oh my gosh. So yeah. So I I, I have a friend. I'm gonna. Can, Okay, and I have a backup friend. Oh, sweet. Okay. That I'm, I'm going to connect you to, I'm going to connect you to um, to Mike Bolenbach, Bolenbach, and he actually recorded our uh, Nunzilla album, and uh, he's awesome from um, Full Well Studios, and he's always hanging out with Alice Cooper, so I want to oh. make a connection, so maybe that could, we can make that happen with your friend, and between you and Mike, or, you know, her and Mike, we can make it happen. <laughs> Uh, so Nick says you more likely would have been run into him at DeVry from 96 to 99. 90. So he went to DeVry. And so I was at DeVry from 94 to like 2006 or something, <laughs> you know? So yeah. Wait, when did you leave DeVry? You said 99? Yeah. Oh, then yeah. Then we, yeah, we were there at the same time. Nick, do I know you? 
<laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. So, so PJ, my cocktail consultant is on. So I oh, love how he says he would love to do an Alice Cooper cocktail. I agree. I would love for you to do one. So yeah. So th that's on my wish list. And so PJ, we got to make it happen. I, PJ, agree. I need to know you because that drink, now I'm, I didn't get the pleasure of having this fancy wild stallion drink, but when I was looking at the pictures and everything and he says what you do, like, I need to know you. <laughs> so I'm interested. And in I that. honestly think PJ, this is the best cocktail you've made so far. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's, it's like, and there've been some really amazing cocktails, but this one, I mean, I think it's that stout reduction that is just amazing. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. PJ, he said the, did you hear him PJ? He said the best cocktail. I mean, those are, those are pretty bold and I, words. I, I, and I do not throw around best cocktail lightly. Mm -mm. I mean. That's a bold statement, man. PJ. So I need to, <laughs> so so how do I then, if this is the best one, how, how do I do that? How do I get that? I know. Well, that's a good that. because I, know, I know he said he had a little bit of the stout reduction left. Mm, see, so, I like stout, you so know, I, I will connect the two of you because I think, I think you need one of these because you said you like beer. And so I, it's kind of, it's that kind of like, it's that beer. But the other thing I love is that little bit of pepper going down the middle of it. Mm, yeah. Over time, it's getting more and more into the cocktail which is great. Oh, Nancy's saying, oh, question 10, question 10. Come on. What are oh, you doing? Hey, she's rushing. <laughs> All right, Nancy. Okay. All right, Nancy. Okay. Okay. We're going to keep on track. All right. So which one of these stores was not on the second floor? Wait a minute. That's not right. That's not right. Oh, <gasps> no, that's not. Oh, it says hot dog on a stick, but hot dog, um, that's, that is um that is not the right answer. <laughs> oh, so see, I assume because it was the only one that was a food thing. Mm -mm. Yeah, not food. So hot dog on a stick was on the second floor. It was on the second floor. Oh, yes, oh. hot dog on a stick was on the second floor. Right, like if you were walking down the hall to the food court, which was on the second floor, then and hot dog on a stick was was uh, right there in that hallway. Ah, oh. so the, the food court in Metro was on its second floor. Which, you know, maybe different for I don't know. It's the only mall I know, but it was always. Oh, on I didn't realize that that was a. Okay, mm -hmm. so the ice cream would have been first floor as opposed to I assume like the ice cream would have been like the basement level. See, and that's where it gets tricky, <laughs> you know, <laughs> because like where the ice skating rink was, like there was the movie theater, the Harkins, right? And then they, and then then the ice skating rink went away, and they they floored it in and put chairs and tables where that, where there was no, there was nothing, you know, <laughs> they, you know, they, they walled that in. And then, so I had to go to the Harkins after that to see, okay, well, what is down there now? Right. And what I feel like they did is I think they made the Harkins bigger, which was downstairs, like from the outside, oh. if you went to the Harkins, then you had to go down this really long escalator underneath, uh, uh, like in a basement kind of level, really. And that's where the Harkins is now, I think, where the ice skating rink used to be. So if anyone wants to pop in on that, if you know more about that, but that's how I envisioned they were able to make that happen. So technically, it was the second floor where the, the food court was. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. So then, so that is not the answer. So I wonder now, okay, before. I, so, well, well, that's good because already we have people like, like Carolee and Bab saying, oh, no. And yeah, that, that's, you're wrong. I'm like, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't know I was wrong. So. so no, that's okay. So um, so I see people guessing. Say which say what you think the answer is, and I'll tell you which one it is. They're talking about Chick-fil-A, K food place outside the food court. Cause obviously I because I know the answer, you know. They took out the rink and ASU classrooms put in the Harkins. Oh, really? ASU classrooms in in the mall in the movie theater. What? Because there was no one going to the movie. Like, used to date a girl that walked on the worked at you know. I, I love how the girl that worked on the lemonade, lemonade keeps popping up again. I mean, they're <laughs> taking it about how they made too much noise doing the lemonade. John then, got it right. John, yeah, Spencer's. Um, Spencer's was on the was on the first floor of oh, and, and Lisa got Spencer. Yeah. So. Spencer's, yeah. 
Man, who who loves Spencer's? Raise your hand. Man, Spencer's was oh cool. Oh my gosh. <laughs> my teenage years looking at all those little boxes for the naughty gifts. Yes. That were, I mean, it's like by today's standards, we're like nothing. But it's, <laughs> right. just, but not, it's just naughty, so not even naughty at all. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> so Spencer's yeah. was the coolest store, you know, in, in oh the my God, all the black light posters, all the posters. Yep. I have posters. I've got a Jimi Hendrix poster from there that I still have. Um, I would go there and buy for our, our Nunzilla shows. We would have a, a beacon lights, you know, that we would have playing all right, of I'm our just like the party lights. Yep. We had part, we had the red and blue beacon lights and fog machines. Cause our whole thing was, you know, Nunzilla and, you know, Godzilla and the big nuns that would destroy the city and blah, blah, blah. So we would have, you know, smoke machines and beacon lights to, for effect, you know, while we played like nunsploitation movies on the TV, on the screen oh. and all this crazy stuff. But I would go to Spencer's to buy the beacon lights and our fog machines. And I would go get fog juice and everything. That's where I went and got all my stuff. <laughs> right. It was before we had Party City and things like that, where you could go get that stuff. It was yep. like, Yeah. It was it was Spencer. So right on. So John wins because he he typed it in first. I don't know what he wins, but you you're a winner, winner, chicken dinner. So. And actually, there's no prizes other than the fact that yay! yay! Oh, give him a round of applause. You get a round of applause, John. <laughs> I like press is like, oh, you can get cut off jeans next to Ferrari posters. <laughs> Well, I can say, uh, so speaking of uh, uh, one little, another little fun fact I'll give you guys. Um, that I wonder if anyone can guess the name. Okay, so before there was Hot Topic, there was another music slash store that was kind of like Hot Topic, but not. Meaning you get music and cool clothes, but it was more of a, it was, it was more of a, a rock related store versus Hot Topic, which was goth ish emo ish i don't know whatever it was back then it was weird to us back then <laughs> when, it, when, it, when it popped up you know but there was another store in the corner actually right down the hall from hot topic that was in the corner put the name of that store in the chat if you remember what that store was because that is where i used to hang out at before it was hot topic and when i got to go work at hot topic and i'll tell you why i wound up working there is it was my senior year and I was in this program because I had enough credit. So I only had to go to school from eight to 12. And, but I was in a program like called the DCE, Diversified Cooperative Education or whatever. Total nerd stuff. That's what I did. But you had to have a job in the afternoon in order to be part of this. So the teacher had a big long list of all the places that stores that they must have you know, communicated with that said, hey, if you hire our high school students, can you give them a job? And then your, their performance at the job would be part of their grade. You know, and so the teacher gave me the list. Uh, Miss Galloway, I think her name was, gave me the list. And I'm looking through the list and everything. And, it, and it's like Hot Topic music, music store in the mall. And I'm like, what? There's only one place like this. I don't know. So anyway, that's how I got the job. I had to do it for school. Oh. <laughs> so I had to go there and he had to communicate. My boss had to communicate with my teacher and everything like that. So it was kind of like this work program, if you will, but we got to choose from the list, like where we wanted to go and apply. And then I got hired there. I worked there for about three weeks. Okay. <laughs> not very long. <laughs> <laughs> that um, is not long at all. Not long at all. Unpacked everything, set up the whole store, the store grand opening, opening and everything. And my boss brings me in one day and he says, Kenyatta, um, we're going to have to let you go. And I was like, what do you mean? Let me go. He's like, we're gonna have to let you go. And I was devastated. I'm like, well, why are you letting me go? He goes, well, you, you talk too much to the customers. Like you're too friendly with the customers. And he's like, you're supposed to be making sure they're not stealing things. And I said, oh, well, is someone stealing stuff while I'm working? He goes, well, no. I said, so what's the problem? He goes, well, you're just being too friendly. It's just not going to work out. We're going to let you go. And I said, wait a minute. If I'm talking to the customers and they're not stealing anything because I'm standing right there talking to them going, hey, oh, you're going to buy this Metallica t-shirt. Maybe you should go come over here and look at our buttons. You know, I'm like making sales, then they're not stealing anything, you know, and I think he probably really just didn't like my smart mouth or he had some other issue. But either way, I got fired from Hot Topic. So that's a fun fact for you all. <laughs> After three weeks, I got fired for reasons unknown. I go home and here's the thing. And I and I've people have heard this part of the story before I uh, in my business life. I go home and I tell my mom I'm bawling. Oh, my God, I got fired from Hot Topic. Whoa, what my life? What am I going to do? And my mom looks at me and she goes, why are you crying? 
And I'm like, I got fired from my job. Like, this is devastating to me. And she goes, are you going to work in retail the whole, the rest of your life? And I was like, the way she asked the question, it sounded like the answer should be no. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, no. And she goes, well, then quit crying then. He probably did you a favor. And I was like, hmm, perspective. <laughs> you know? so, so, and Preston got fired as well. Who did? Preston got fired from Hot Topic as well. Preston got fired from Hot Topic as well. So yeah, so perspective. My mom's like, get over it, get over it. You're not going to do that the rest of your life anyway. And so, and she was right. You know, I wound up very shortly after that, got a temp job because I didn't know what to do. I'm like, I don't know what to do. And then I wound up at um at DeVry, <laughs> which literally changed my life. So let me just it, you know close that loop because. I started at DeVry because I got fired from Hot Topic. I was a temp and I worked at a couple of different places and I landed at DeVry and it literally changed my life. Working at that college um, put me in the exact place that I needed to be that I didn't know I needed to be. Obviously, most people don't even know there's jobs at a college other than teaching, but it set me on the path that put me where I am today, a behavioral superpowers coach. I mean, I'm a trainer, I'm a consultant, and I help people grow and develop. It helped shape me into the person I am today. Um, and I, I couldn't be happier. So to go back to the story, guy, whoever you were that fired me at Hot Topic, thank you. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> thank you. Because you were right. That was not meant for me. And my life and the people I've been able to touch in that process, um, you set the trajectory for that. So I appreciate you, guy, who I don't remember your name, but I do remember your face because I'll never forget it because, um, yeah, I'll, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> All right. So you brought up the question of the other kind of music store that predated Hot Topics. Oh, someone put it in there? Well, I think Babs is trying, like something like Venner. Nope. No, nope. it was, it was okay. in the, it was in the corner. It was, it was way tucked. Like you was in the corner, like if you were hot topic was cause hot topic had one location and then it moved like a couple doors down in the same area. But if you walk down to the end and then what was it broad, whatever anchor store that was right there by there, you walked and you walked kind of around the corner and it was tucked in the corner and it was a cool store. It was dark and you could get things like skull rings and, you know, chain wallets and you know heavy metal stuff and everything so if anyone gets i mean i'll tell you what the name is but i'm just curious if anybody knows what it is no bab said it's, it's some weird name it's some weird name well it's a very unlike it's a weird name can i just i'll just tell you uh it was called um whatever's it was called whatever <laughs> what it was it was whatever <laughs> well they took a note from golf and stuff and said well you know we're just gonna call it whatever <laughs> they took a note from whatever and i remember when hot hot topic came it was competition for whatever's because it was a music kind of related store that sold that kind of stuff but hot topic came with you know I, and I don't know if the word goth is correct or not, but I mean, they came with the plaid stuff and the corsets and, you know, the, the, the stuff that wasn't like in whatever's, whatever was more like hard rock, heavy metal style and whatever's was, I mean, and then hot topic was different, like maybe nine inch nails, you know what I mean? Like, or something like that. Right. I, I, I might be wrong in that regard, but they were different music genres really, but they still competed with each other in some kind of way. Cause I was a fan of whatever. So when I saw hot topic coming, I was like, what is this thing? You know? And then I kind of saw, I'm like, Oh, okay. This is kind of interesting. And then hot topic morphed into whatever the hell it turned into after that. I don't know. <laughs> But they had cool stuff in there too. So Preston, I mean, I worked there, like I said, for three weeks. What do I know? <laughs> <laughs> so Kenyatta, how can people follow you or find out more about you? Oh yeah. Uh, so uh, I'm on Facebook. Find me on Facebook. Um, I'm on LinkedIn for the folks who are on LinkedIn, Kenyatta Turner. Uh, you can go to my website, Freedom Empire Consulting, uh, because I am a behavioral superpowers coach who uh, decodes human behavior and I optimize performance using validated behavioral insights. That is what I do. And what does that mean? 
Call me and find out. Exactly. <laughs> Call me and find out. Um, but yeah, you can find me. I'm on Instagram. Everything's just Kenyatta Turner because, you know, hey, I'm the only one <laughs> in my mind. And um, Freedom Empire Consulting is my business. That's my company. And I um, just, I don't know, love helping people, love what I do. I help people build and shield their freedom empires. And I love working with business owners. So if you guys are small business owners and um, entrepreneurs and you want to protect your businesses and get some resources that you need, that's where I love. And um, yeah, that's what I do. Oh, and then I will tell you as well is that if you're interested in anything really cool, I'm about to do a three day challenge that starts on January 19th. People love to set goals. They love to come up with a New Year's resolution. And then by the 19th of January, they've already thrown that out the window. And so I do behavioral vision challenge that I'm going to do. So you can go to my website or Freedom Empire Consulting slash behavioral vision challenge and then come and check it out. So yeah, just some stuff I do. Very good. Well, thank you so much for joining us tonight and sharing your love of Metro Center. Thank you so much for having me, Marshall. This is a blast. And thank you to everyone who's been in here, at, you know, having fun with us, Babs and Sarah and Nick and Preston and PJ and L.I. Takata. L.I., what's your, is that, you said that's your friend. What's her name? Or that person? She goes, yeah. Yes, absolutely. And everyone who's been hanging out with us, Nick, Carolee. Well, I, don't I know. love that we have this like crossover friends that who even knew. I yeah. mean, who even knew? Yeah, and John. So funny. I mean, oh my gosh. Yeah. This is this has that's been a blast. What so. I love about these is everybody gets to learn something. Yeah. And so please, you guys, reach out and connect with me, find me, friend me, say hey, and put send a message. Hey, I was on the, the thing. That way I know that's where from. I'm always looking to, to make friends and hang out with cool people. And you if you guys are hanging out on his show, then you're cool. So, you know, we can we can't go from there. <laughs> but yeah, Marshall, you're you're awesome. This is this has been a blast. I appreciate you. Uh, thank you so much and have a great rest of your night. Absolutely. You too. Everyone else, see you guys later. Bye. Oh my gosh. So you might not have thought it was worth sharing at the very onset, but you know, after <laughs> we went through that trivia, I hope now you see the value in sharing as you can share. Oh, so much fun as what we get to have talking about Metro Center and other malls and just so much stuff. Now, our next segment is actually sponsored by First Families of Arizona. They're a really cool group that um, you can find them on Facebook under First Founders of Arizona or their website, which is the acronym. So TFFOA.org. But they're doing all kinds of virtual programs as well and some really cool stuff coming up. We're now getting ready for Little Arizona. So a lot of people don't realize, I mean, you know, it's I'm like, oh, I moved here from New York. I grew up in a small farm town in Indiana of about 25 people. There were two roads, one stop sign. At the end of one street, there was a flashing light so that when you're on the highway, you would slow down. And so moving to Arizona, it was like, that's one of the things I love is not only just being in the fifth largest city in the country, but also being able to go visit small towns. And so we're going to talk about Aravaca, which is a little town that is about an hour south of tu southwest of Tucson and about 14 miles from the border of Mexico. Now, initially it was home to the Pino, Pima and the Tohono Autumn. Um, the name Aravaca basically means small spring. Now it dates back to the Spaniards who had small silver mines there and actually became part of the US with, with the Gadsden Purchase. I know, Pam, you know, and it was so funny because when I was looking at a small town um, last week, we did strawberry and I found mentioned that they had the oldest school in Arizona. Well, I found that actually there's one place that has one older and it's Aravaca. And then it was like, oh, my gosh, what an amazing little town. So. So Aravaca, I mean, population under 300 people. Um, in the. 1860s, they discovered more silver and so then became a mining town. Now they had problems because of the water and mosquitoes. So those have been taken care of, but there are still, I mean, you can still go see, and this is the oldest school still standing in Arizona. 
I mean, it opened its doors in 1879, which I think is pretty amazing. You can go to La Hinta, and which was opened up in 1880. It started off as a dance hall, became a barn. It's now a cafe and community space. As well as there's still a farmer's market that is now doing curbside delivery, so you can still get your vegetables during certain times, as well as so many other products they sell. What I love is that it's named for the farmer's market has the name of Marion. And it's basically a, a woman who was a farmer who raised chickens, cattle, geese. And so she used to sell her wares from under a big tree there. Now, because I'm a librarian, I am going to be geek out a little bit and say that Aravaca is likely home to the first library in Arizona. So one of the investors in one of the big mine, his name was Sam Colt from indeed the gun manufacturer. And he sent a collection of books to there so the miners could improve their education. And so thereby creating really one of the first, if not the first library in all of Arizona. Now, it's also kind of the gateway. You can go visit this amazing park that is kind of on that border of you've got a footpath. You've got this boardwalk that's really great for bird watching. It leads you through a variety of groves where you can see old growth oaks, willows, grassy areas speckled with a variety of sunflowers and wildflowers. So, you know, it's, I've heard people talk about Aravaca. I've never been. It is now like one of the top places on my list of places to go. So I can hardly wait to go visit Aravaca, which seems so kind of steeped in its own history. And I've heard it's got a great bar as well, which I haven't been to. So I don't want to say a great bar because, you know, my standards are kind of high, especially after this cocktail tonight. But so coming up next week, we have Ben Tyler, who is a local playwright, who has written a play. Let's see. He's done a Winnie Ruth Judd play. He did a play about Barry Goldwater and a few other things. Oh, Wallace and Ladmo, he wrote a play about. So that's going to be a really fun discussion as well. So remember, if you have any suggestions, questions, stories, or comments, feel free. If you didn't get a chance to post them here in the chat, feel free to email Facebook. Here's how you can reach out through Facebook, Marshall Hip Historian, Instagram Hip Historian, email, hello at Hip Historian. So hopefully you see the running theme there. So, and don't forget, oh, and actually I didn't change that. Actually, this one is sold out. March 13th is our next available set of tickets. And that again is a mass walking tour of downtown. That is so much fun please visit my website. Um, also this Sunday over at 7th Avenue and um, there at the, that the wa at the park right there where Thunderbird Lounge is, we're gonna have a little pop-up market. So I'm gonna be there with some t-shirts. Um, there's gonna be about, I think 10 other vendors there. So come check us out. That's gonna be a lot of fun. Again, we're all gonna be masked up, just out there having fun chatting with folks. I always like to give a shout out to PJ, my cocktail advisor. I wish you were always around me so that I could drink amazing cocktails all the time. Um, intro music was by my friend Cole, who wrote that. Um, video was from Chris. And as outro, we have Mr. Ho and his orchestratica orchestra from the East Coast, but he is a Sunny Slope boy, as well as there is found film footage. So thank you all so much for joining us. Have a great rest of your night, and I will see you next week. Enjoy. Oh.